119 years old, San Jose's Japantown is a rare treasure. One of only three authentic historic Japan towns in the U.S., it attracts visitors by the score for colorful events like the Oban and Nikkei Matsuri festivals. Crowds as thick as cherry blossoms in spring come to taste the food, admire the crafts, and listen to the music. Hometown favorite San Jose Taiko is always a big hit. Taiko just hits you right here in the heart. Um, it's one of those immediate sensations that once you are moved by, by the vibration of the drum, I think it just communicates something so basic to everybody. It's kind of the vibration of the Taiko rippling out into communities where we are erasing boundaries where people can kind of start to connect together. And I feel that that's what our music has been able to do. Part dancer, part drummer, PJ Hirabayashi and her husband Roy, founder of San Jose Taiko, have been connecting communities with the staccato rhythms of Kumi Daiko drumming for 36 years. Their world-class ensemble has been recognized by the National Endowment for the Arts, the California Arts Council, and the Rockefeller Center, just to name a few. The company formed in 1973, and in the early 90s, they took their show on the road. Over the past 18 years, they have shared Taiko with audiences the world over. That has been a long, long road and a long challenge. But I guess um, the other, I guess, interesting part of this, all of this journey that we've had is that the fact that two of us are married as a couple and been doing this for 35 years as a couple. PJ and Roy's romance began in true Silicon Valley style. I like to say that we were computer matched, <laughs> punch cards <laughs> era. Um, but uh, we were uh, students in the same class and Roy actually bailed me out to be able to get out of the class at least uh, satisfactorily. <laughs> like all Japanese guys at that time, we thought we'd go into the sciences basically. But anyway, so uh, I went to Cal State Hayward to take a computer, basic computer programming class, and, um, and I met PJ in that class. Um, it was uh, really early, I was like, uh, where you had to do this key punch card thing, you know, it was very early on programming. Um, and so it was an interesting class and we had great fun in that class together. Roy moved on to San Jose State and PJ transferred to Cal. Both majored in Asian American studies and both were exposed to the Japanese art form known as Taiko. I remember seeing two, two women playing, a mother and a daughter, um, that were on the stage equally with men and there was something just really captivating to see this, these women play as powerfully as the men and there was no gender difference and that was something that really attracted me to Taiko. After I graduated from UC Berkeley I went to Japan for a year and uh, I just had in the back of my mind is that Taiko was always uh, exciting um, activity that I would like to pursue at some time in my life. <laughs> when PJ returned to the valley, she found that Roy was pursuing the same dream. We started San Jose Taiko in 1973. We started actually at the San Jose Buddhist Church, which is right down the street from our offices here. Um, and we began the group as actually a youth project at the temple. Roy had been a member of his high school band and knew his way around rock and roll, but when it came to Japanese music structure, he was at a loss. Because of that, we really just jumped into playing, doing what we felt what Taiko was about, rather than actually knowing, I guess, what Taiko was about. Substituting passion for precision paid off in a sound that is uniquely San Jose Taiko. The inclusion of instruments from Cuba, Africa, and Latin America add to its distinctive voice. 
having grown up here in America, hearing all these rich flavors and, and sounds kind of really inspire us to create this different sound. I didn't listen or study Japanese classical music. I grew up listening to rock and roll, R&B, soul, you know, jazz or whatever it was. And, um, and it's those influences for me that help create the, the sounds or the music that I write as for Taiko right now. What we're trying to do as a group is we've been able to early on create a sounds a Taiko sound that's different from other groups. They refine that San Jose sound at rehearsals three and four times a week, so they can tour six to ten weeks a year. In composing San Jose Taiko repertoire, um, it is a very holistic process in that we really encourage the members of our company to be a part of that creative process. And unlike trying to copy music from Japan, we really want to uh, create music that really reflects how we grew up here in America. The Hirabayashis have grown their organization from a small youth group program to a full-fledged touring company of professional taiko performers. It's been a, a real challenge naturally as an organization to develop uh, something that's out of nothing and uh, the real big challenges have been more on the educational side of uh, trying to let people know what taiko is all about when we first started because no one knew what it was and it wasn't even considered an art form and funders wouldn't even look at it. The Hirabayashis have effectively erased any doubt that taiko is a legitimate art form and today foundations like Packard, Hewlett and Knight make sure the beat goes on. Well, 35 years I would have never thought of this be being my livelihood and um, to be able to have something to um, love and do, and do what you love doing is probably the main ingredient for success. The first fill we'll teach you is probably the second easiest after movement and it's what we call the step across. Public workshops, school outreach programs and live performances keep the San Jose Taiko calendar pretty full and the Hirabayashi show no sign of slowing the tempo. The thing that really drives me to continue is that there is so much power not only in the musical aspect of playing and, and having that self-expression, but it is seeing how it touches other people. PJ and Roy's passion for taiko has shaped their lives together. Roy says it's what keeps them in sync. It's ups and downs as far as being involved with uh, being working and living and being married at the same time. But I guess for both of us, at least I feel that sharing in that art form again and being able to create the music, it's, it's been, that's what's held us all together. Not bad for a match made by computer.